Hello. Hello, everyone. Live from my grandmother's basement. This is the We Are Trash People currently uh, Twitch cast. Yes. Twitch stream. We're on Twitch now. We're on Twitch now. Because Goodbye, podcasting. Goodbye, podcasting. Twitch is my best friend now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, we've moved on. It's for the better. Uh, but we're here now. And I'm so excited. Yeah. We are the We Are Trash People. We are talking about the comedian who is going to be on the uh, Planet Scum live stream with Chris Gethard tonight. And today, that's Joe Firestone. Joe Firestone. I'm so excited. I love Joe Firestone. I've, I've loved her since I first saw her work on the Chris Gethard show yeah. all those years ago. Uh, she gets confused in my brain with a few other uh, women women comedians that who sound true. exactly like her <laughs> um like aparna and charla and they've done uh, like some really cool things yeah, together we'll talk and about I one of those a little later cannot tell the difference between their voices um and for some reason anna fabrega i think it's because they're similar heights they are similar heights they're both carrie fisher sized people they don't look the same at all though and no. they don't sound no, the same not at all uh, but i love joe firestone i've loved her since the chris gethard show uh when she came on as the goat woman um, because that, well, she didn't come on as the goat woman. She called herself the goat woman. And that, that was just hilarious to me. Uh, and she has grown ever since, uh, culminating the last we heard, uh, she was the working on the, the National Lampoon yeah. Radio Hour. I also just want to note, there's a really funny interview where they ask Go Joe, how did you become known as the goat woman? And she's like, well, I love goats. <laughs> Which is a great origin story for that. I wish all superheroes were just named by the animals they most love. <laughs> just like, yeah, no, I'm Batman. It's because I like bats. It's actually the, kind of the opposite <laughs> of why Batman is Batman. Catwoman loves cats. That part's true. Batman, afraid of bats, much like cowardly and superstitious criminals. Yes. But Nacho Firestone, who is great. Who is great. So we're going to talk about her bio. We're going to go through some clips because now that we're on twitch this is basically a watch show we're gonna watch some clips of some awesome things that you can find her on youtube essentially yeah, primarily youtube uh and anyone who has seen her or has things to say about her we're going to be taking calls later on you can also comment in any of the comment things and we will be able to see it and then put it on our screen because this is magic this is magic. It's it's all magic now. But, uh, so. but yeah, we wanted to talk about Joe Firestone from the bio from her website. Uh, Joe Firestone is a comedian whose work can be seen on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Joe Para Talks With You, High Maintenance, Shrill, The Chris Gethard Show, and more. She can be heard on Maximum Fun's Dr. Game Show, a podcast she co-hosts with Mor Manola Moreno and Comedy Central's Manolo! Everyday Decisions, a podcast she hosts all alone. Her album, The Hits, is available on Comedy Central Records. And if you like puns, check out Punderdome, a card game for pun lovers. She is very willing to work with animals. Please consider her for animal work. Oh, that guy who had all of the pets in the place, you know, from Chris, that episode. Chris Gethard with all the dogs? No, no. Oh, the the public access guy. Yes, thank the, you. Uh, oh, <laughs> my brain has, has turned off. Yeah, uh, Pet Perry. Yes, Pet Perry. Who who has all the animals who keep jumping off the desk and causing problems in public yes. access studios? I would love to see a Pet Perry Firestone collab. Oh my god, that would be incredible. Um, so yeah, uh, Pet Perry, if you're out there, if you're watching, consider Joe Firestone. And also, this is not from her bio, but she was on the long lost 2016 Chris Gethard election special as the Constitutional Avenger. Yep. It was funny. It was a great bit. Until it wasn't. Um, but then what are some funny things we love that Joe Firestone has made? Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna jump into our YouTube dive uh about her. And but the first thing that we are going to talk about is a podcast. Yes, it is Dr. Game Show. Dr. Game Show. Which is a family-friendly podcast where people send in games and we play them with comedian guests and callers. It's hosted by Joe Firestone and Manolo Moreno, as we talked about, and 
Planet Scum fans will remember Manolo from the first Enchanted Pumice, yeah. where he was Marianne's gamer ex, and his two episodes of the special without Brett Davis that he was on. Mm-hmm. And I listened to episode 28 of Dr. Game Show, Cowabunga Bunga with Rachel Pegram. Ah. And it was it was just a, it was a really fun episode. The game was, well, there were multiple games. One of the games was the titular Cowabunga Bunga, where people had to sing things to the nin- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song. <laughs> and they would be rated as Cowabunga or Bunga. Um, <laughs> And then there was also the wonderful game at the end where they had to determine if something was a authentic Pennsylvania cheese. And I keep hearing them talking to me and I'm like, and, wait, uh, Rachel Pegram being... was there to determine, I think the cheese and the Manolo determined whether it was authentically Pennsylvanian. Mm. And so we're just going to pop up a short little clip from it where they explain the game they played in better detail with more cogent words uh, than I just used. Yep. Shell shock. That's what it was. Oh, because they have shells. Because yeah. <laughs> they're heroes in a half shell. Oh, no clip audio. Oh no. Oh, you I know, know what the we problem. probably didn't do is uh, select that little box. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go back. Did you? So you might have missed our song then. In that oh, case, you probably no. missed our opening song. So we worked so uh, hard to find that we clip did. to play for you. We didn't really. We were just watching a bunch of stuff and we're like, that's hilarious. So I'll have uh, to exactly I'm, redactal that exactly dang that box. dang box. That so dang we're gonna box. have to go back and share that song with you after this. Oh yeah. I couldn't make this <laughs> song any better. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> So uh, callers compete to come up with the best four word phrase that can be sung to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song. If Manolo likes their song, he gives them a cowabunga. If he doesn't like, mm-hmm. then he gives he they get shells shocked. Huh? Mm-hmm. So either they so do you guys know the theme song of Teenage oh, Mutant Ninja Turtles? I don't. <clears throat> how's it go? Oh, I. You'll have to listen to the podcast to find out how it goes. What? No, but no, I want to know joking, how I'm it joking. Goes. Here it goes. Here's how it goes. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles in a half shell. Turtle power. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it heroes in a half shell? <laughs> yes, but. Oh, so they need to come up with and so four then they words get told, that would fit. Yeah, and they have well, to sing does, it to that. What does she come up with? But you will have to listen to the episode to find out. Oh. Why are you making me do work? Because I didn't write it down. I'm just saying that this is non-essential labor and uh, I shouldn't have to do it for that reason. Well, luckily, you're able to do that inside. So you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Podcasts, still a safe way to socialize. They are apparently actually essential in LA. Wow, Because really? it's media production and they fall under the media production umbrella. And so they actually count as essential. So Media we're... production is essential? Well, apparently, some of it is. Obviously, they don't not make all a difference it. between like news and no. not news. No. Wow. No. Gosh, Los Angeles. But Whew. that can take us on to our next thing, actually. <laughs> our next excellent clip that we want to show you is where the song was from. So we're going to show you the song that you missed as part of this one. Yes, the song that we tried to play as a charming introduction to this episode. You will now hear, uh, this is from the special without Brett Davis. Uh, This is from her episode, Goldie Goldberg and Friends, which like every episode of the special is a wild ride through absurdity and and then darkness. Uh, I love it. Oh my God. I'm an 
<laughs> and eagle-eyed viewers recognize that puppet up there as the same puppet who portrayed doorknob on chemistry class yeah it's pretty cool um, that's the puppet uh this was a goldie goldberg and friends was a like children's television show which it, it, it goes awry yeah it has a dark underbelly that yes is what we love about the special without <laughs> brett davis <laughs> Um, Dr. Furrowbrow, who is a large puppet who hates fun, is played by Joe Rumrill yeah. in this very episode. And Dinky, which is the role played by the puppet who played Doorknob, mm -hmm. is voiced by none other than Brett Davis himself. Yep. Uh, and if we go to about, about four minutes in, uh, there's some fun stuff we wanted to share with all of you. You're going to hang out for for a minute or so with the special without Brett Davis. So, here we go. I uh I lost a friend today. Oh no, someone's died. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Well, remember when I went to the pet store and I told you about the new friend I made named Goldie? Just like you. Yes, I remember when you named the fish after me. Yeah. What happened? Well, I love it so much. I loved it too much. And uh, I kept giving it more and more food because I wanted to treat it nice and all. And uh, well, I woke up in the morning and the fish was floating at the top of the <gasps> bowl. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay, Dinky. A lot of things die. And that's good to remember that many things die and it's not your fault. But a lot of times you can love something too much and then it suffocates. <laughs> <laughs> I like that yeah. life lesson. That's a very important one for us all to remember, I think. Mm hmm. Yep. So it's pretty fun. Uh, we play with themes of reality yeah. and it fracturing. <laughs> <laughs> and then speaking of fractures, the next one is the National Lampoon Radio Hour, which has a short sketch called Fairy Tale Christmas, which has a similarly fractured view of things. Yes. Uh, starring, of course, uh, Joe. Yes. And it's very fun. I remember having to stop and laugh out loud. Uh, because we were driving while listening to this the first time. <laughs> oh yeah, that was so. Ah, oh, it's so good. And here's here's some of that. Good morrow, boys and girls, and welcome to part one of National Lampoon's A Very Fairy Christmas. This story takes place a long, long time ago in a time of princes and dragons and not a tooth in sight. Remember, children, orthodontia is a relatively new field of um what is it? Medicine? Uh, Claire, will you look up orthodontia and see what you would, uh, uh, j just how you would classify it? Yeah, checking. Thank you, sweetheart. Anyhow, our story begins with our heroine, Eve, a charming but poor young maiden who doesn't quite fit in with the other girls in town. Eve believes it's because her dreams are too grand for the small-minded villagers. Really, it's, it, it's just classism frankly. Uh, we join Eve now as she enters the town square to sell the sorry lot of eggs her old hen has laid. Hi, Eve. Hello, Caitlin. Nice eggs. How many is there? Like two? Three. I have three eggs today. Oops, I fell into you. I must have tripped over your dirty old shoeless feet. Uh-oh, did I break one of your eggs? Actually, you've broken all three. <laughs> Silly me! Oh gosh, now you're covered in it. That's okay. I only wear my dresses once before I burn them in front of my maids. Hear ye, hear ye! If you can hear my voice, clap once. If you can hear my voice, clap twice. Great! Okay, let's see what I'm reading here. Ah, yes. By order of the king, his royal highness, Kirby the First, there is to be a Christmas ball. Every maiden is to attend as the prince will be selecting a bride. The messenger said, the king has said, the prince is throwing a ball, a glorious Christmas ball. Shh, oh, De Debra, what are you doing? I'm, uh, the Christmas ball song? No, honey, no, clock out. Ooh. All right, yeah, no. All right, folks, that's it, carry on. Did you hear him? 
a Christmas ball. Every maiden to attend, the prince will choose a bride. Yeah, no, I heard. I just can't believe I'm officially invited to a ball. I never dreamed I, a poor, destitute farmer's daughter, Eve, would be able to attend a ball. One more thing. <laughs> there is a door charge. Not too steep, considering what you get. Lots of little shrimp bites, and I don't, I don't remember what the paper said. I think there's a vegan option. Anyhow, it's $400. It's sort of a benefit for the gay men's health crisis. So, okay, just trying to think if there's anything else before I embarrass myself again like that. <laughs> nope, uh, that's... uh. That's it. Oh no, four hundred dollars! I'll never be able to go now. A door charge, a door charge, shrimp bites too. <laughs> <laughs> Will Eve be able to go to that fairy tale ball? Will Eve be able to go to that fairy tale ball? Well, we'll find out. Uh, maybe if there's time at the end. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe. But then the next is. Joe's TED Talk. Yes. So this is from a few years ago. Yes. 2013. Yes. This I think. is a 2016. 2016. Mm, 2016. So 2016. It's a, te- a TEDx New York. And it's a. Uh, it's it's a her fun TED one. Talk. And it's, yeah, yeah. It's her TED Talk. Uh, everyone is terrible. And that's okay. It's it's so good. And. Yeah. and we're gonna start at about. We're gonna start about two minutes in, but no, let's start at about seven. Seven minutes in, okay. Yeah, let, we're gonna let's start, start about seven, seven minutes in. Let it lay out for a couple minutes and uh, see what nuggets of wisdom we can all find here. And we'll see who is terrible. Yeah, maybe we'll it's see. all of us. Maybe. How about how about a car accident? You ever get really pissed when you're driving because it slows down and you got to get somewhere, but then you find out someone died in a car? Yeah, it happens. I don't care if it's not funny. It's true. All of you said it. <laughs> okay, so so maybe you've never broken a heart, or maybe you've never gotten mad at traffic. Maybe you've done some of the following checklist. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna show you this checklist, and then I'm gonna ask you to say check if you've done it after I read it. First one: going through plastic cups like they're made of leaves. <laughs> Thinking about punching people on the subway. (laughs) Getting mad at customer service reps even though you're just mad at the product. (laughs) Buying stuff you don't even need like kitchen appliances that only make pancakes. (laughs) Waffles, but... Waffles... Waffles can't make other ways. Making plans you know you're going to cancel on. (laughs) Being rude to your good friends and family because you know they aren't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Check. Pulling out your phone at important family functions to check how many likes you got on a mediocre Beyonce tweet. I'm at this family wedding. Like, where are all the single ladies at Beyonce? <laughs> check Beyonce and me. <laughs> <laughs> Who said check? <laughs> You're honest. <laughs> Spending whole days watching Netflix when you could be doing anything decent for society. Check. <laughs> Running check. over animals with your car, even if it's an accident. Check oh. once. It's okay. Rollerblading as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and toilet seat hovering. This is a bad, bad behavior. <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, watch the whole thing to find out why it's okay that we are all terrible. And some other criteria that may indicate that you are, in fact, terrible, just like the rest of us. Yep. Yep. You're right, Dave. That is that was so, so good. good. Uh, uh, we have another awesome clip from the Chris Gethard Joe days. Uh, this was one of her her jobs in comedy. Yes. Writing for the Chris Gethard show, of course. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm really excited. I really like this whole thing, and I think we should watch the whole thing. The whole video? Sure. It's a little yeah. love exclusive. Might as well. And, yeah. And Gethard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Welcome, interns. I want to thank you for your help today. Do you guys know Joe Firestone? She's one of the people that comes up with ideas for the show. Hi. And Joe comes up with a lot of ideas. Some of the adjectives I've attached to them are ludicrous, unusable, (laughs) crazy. So these are ideas that I have rejected. That this is pending. These are pending ideas. Let you know which ones have been outright rejected, but you five will determine which ideas 
our brainstormer Joe Firestone actually gets into action this year. First, I wanted to talk to you guys about an idea called uh, fashion, also known as fruit skin fashion. Could you actually peel? What is this? Sorry. Okay, just peel it. Try to keep those skins intact because you're going to be using them for clothing, right? So it's like this, and then like maybe you have like a wristwatch. This could be like a little cap. Like, what if they had to do physical challenges? Like, if it falls off, then you're naked. <laughs> so, Joe, why don't maybe step out there um, beyond that glass door so you can see us but not hear us, and then I'll wave you back in after we've discussed this. How would you feel about watching that? It's impractical, but I'd like to see it on TV. Does fusion allow nudity? A lot of fruit <laughs> would fall off, I feel like. I feel like seeing a little baby Justin Just Linville in this video. Joe, do you want to come back in? What's our next idea? Every TV show has pranks. You know what I mean? This is using only fruit. We start the episode off with a slip of a banana peel, and people are like, this is a comedy show. I've seen this before. And then it's flat, fruit smash, fruit shanks. F-R-O-T-P-R-A-N-X. <coughs> so you're, you pick up this, you expect this. What if there was a fake finger, or like something thing where like, what? This Joe, I think that's enough. Maybe you can step outside so we can talk about <laughs> fruit pranks. How do you guys feel about Joe's assertion at the top of that pitch that, quote, Every TV show has pranks. I like pranking people, but why does it just have to be food? <laughs> I thought I would never say this, but I would rather watch Fox News. Than wow. Like I think we've discussed fruit pranks enough. Joe, do you want to come back in? I want to know who my allies are. Definitely not the people in the background. <laughs> you, guys want, Joe? you guys want to pursue careers in comedy? Or hey, what? Joe, <laughs> you can't be making threats. Like <laughs> Nobody's done this before in television. So Will Miles is going to try beef and broccoli. Let's yeah, come live Will Miles. restaurant in the city. How many Chinese restaurants are there roughly? There's around 4,000. And then I want you guys all to picture this happening 4,000 times in a row. <laughs> How many of you guys would advise that we do two beef, two broccoli on this show? There's no way in hell you have the budget for 4,000 things of takeout. Great point. 599, 598, 597, 596, 595. Spicy jigglies. This is something actually that I've been trying to for two years. Two years now. How fun is Jello? Very fun. Mm, it's fun. fun. How crazy do spices taste? Super crazy. What if we stir in different spices in different Jello? <laughs> okay, you can eat that. Guess what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you guys, from what I saw, enjoyed spicy jigglies. True, false? True. False. Just seems like fucked up. This next that guy called, is just uh, a well, we negative, negative Ned. <laughs> yeah. Everyone know what a pretzel is? Yes. Drew is going to take off all his clothes. Clearly, this a human is my favorite one. Is this is also my favorite. Soft pretzel, uh. hard pretzel. Soft pretzels use butter. I would also love to see some of these games repurposed into Planet Scum Live specials. And then push your hand I would love to see the spicy jiggly special. <laughs> Twist his arms. I think most people and have what it say, takes well, at home to make. Oh, well, if I've got turned into a pretzel. Oh, well, like, into a pretzel. It's true. Thoughts. We All don't, but most people salt. do. We have, we have fake butter. We actually have real like butter. Oh, we do? Yeah. Then we could do this game. Yeah. The whole experience was slightly erotic. Okay, Joe, you want to come back in? I love that. I love that. Down to either spicy jigglies or, well, I've been turned into a pretzel. I do think that spicy jigglies is something that could change television. Anyone willing to give Joe that chance? Who would like to vote for spicy jigglies? Joe, it looks like after two full years, you're finally going to get a chance to do spicy jigglies. Which episode do you think we're going to do? I don't know if it'll be an episode. It'll probably be a web exclusive. It's fine. I like, uh, I, it's just in my head, I have this image of Joe pitching that to the executives and having a Marty McFly moment where it's like, you might not be ready for spicy, jigg spicy jigglies, but your kids are going to love it. <laughs> and I think that the youth panel of interns mm -hmm. agreeing with that game shows that that's true. It, it is the future of television. So, Forrest, what would have to happen for you to take off your shirt and for us to do Wealth I've Been turned into a pretzel <laughs> a lot. right now? A lot. A lot. Like, like give us something that no. could be accomplished no. by people viewing this no, show. No, the George Lucas talk show taught me not to throw out 
unreasonable challenges that I think are unreasonable, but are actually eminently doable. I would do it, but I feel like it's a bit of a different proposition. Yeah, it is. I am like this close to running and getting a bathing suit top, like straight up. I am <laughs> I'm not this doing close. It. Uh, Tiger Beats wants us to do it. Uh, you know, for the six beautiful people here on my OnlyFans account, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a comedy themed OnlyFans account, except it's about other people's comedy. It's not one where they're doing the, the stripping and the sexy. No, nothing like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't agree with this, but I love I the joke. absolutely agree with this. And I'm very close. Okay, what's it going to take for me to... Like, nothing. Like, nothing. <laughs> like, Tiger Bait's already said that I should just get up and go get the butter. And I don't know if that was to you or to me. suit top. Um, um, I think we should move on to our next... It's more like, what's going to get me to stop? Like, what's going to get me to not get up and get the butter and do well pipe and turn into a pretzel? Either is fine. That's what Tiger Bait says. Either one of us doing it is fine. But I think we should move on to number six of our list of things and talk about womanhood. Yeah, we should totally just talk about womanhood. Womanhood is what we should talk about. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about womanhood. Uh this is Joe Firestone in Aparna and Charla. Uh, this was released by Riot um, Refineries, tw uh, Refinery 29's new comedy destination, delivering fearlessly funny series. We cover taboo topics, raise, uh, raise, ranging. Why can't I read today? Because I'm thinking about well, I've been turned into a pretzel. Here we are back at women. <sighs> well, you know what, Riot, Riot is your your. Your fancy ass new age comedy where you're, we don't give a fuck. We're just taking the money of the people above us and we're giving it to random comedians for the next three years before we get sold for parts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so it's our duty to enjoy all of the things that these various uh, places have given us are, are hacked. And these video, oh, hatched. Hacker, hatched, hatched, are hatched. Our, our CISOs. CISO wasn't sold. It just sort of died. died. Um, our no, Funnier Die is still around. There are more. There are a lot. Oh, our, we don't our know about college them. humor. Our college humor. Which went independent. It's still around. They're around still, but they went independent. And so support them if you love their comedy. Absolutely do that. Um, um, but yeah, we're yeah. going to check out this real quick. How to find the perfect prom dress. This is a beautiful series about two women talking about women things. And they talk like playing bridge, trying to, uh, are, whether or not you need to wear a helmet while you're aqua cycling. Yeah. Aqua cycling is a whole waxing. One. Waxing. So it's, it's great. I love this series. They also have yeah. one that's about what it's like to turn dirty 30. Yep. Which as someone who's 30, wonderful. Yeah. It spoke to me. So first, why don't you just get this playing? Yeah. Uh, this is a Parna quick. and her mom, and Joe Firestone and her mom. And you it's can just leave that listener running mail. <laughs> well, Joe, how was your prom? It was great. I had a great time. They served popcorn there. And I had a couple of fruit punches. And I said this the night away. How about you? Wait a second. You left out some crucial details. Who did you dance with? I danced with John Stamos and I kissed him to death. How was <laughs> you from? A okay. I had two chocolates Ooh, from the snack table. Chocolate. And I gave I out love my chocolate. number to 17 guys. And you sound a lot like your mom. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You sound just like your mom. No! You're a younger version of your mom. Shut up! It's true! <laughs> You're a monster! I'm not a monster! You're your mom! Why are you talking to me this way? You're your mother's daughter! No! It's true! Spreading lies is wrong! I'm not spreading lies! I'm just telling you! I'll take you to court! <laughs> okay, I'll drop it. Well, this has been our show. I'm... <laughs> So, I suppose we're back for pretzels. We're back for well, <laughs> I've been turned into a pretzel. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the best game show you've ever seen on Twitch or anywhere else. From the mind of Joe Firestone, Welp, 
I've been turned into a pretzel. My name is Emily Pineapple, and today, well, I'm getting turned into a pretzel. And my name is Forrest, the, the keeper of the canon, uh, and, and, and amateur buzzkill on the internet. Amateur buzzkill on no, the internet. No, I think I could go pro. This was also a really fun time to, re uh, to remember that I hate swimming and therefore have no cute bathing suits. <laughs> this is my mother's from the 80s. What are we doing? I'm getting turned into a pretzel. Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Welp. I'm getting turned into a pretzel. Can I get uh, your favorite type of pretzel? In the chat, I want to see in the messages while this is happening your favorite kind of pretzel. Is it a big soft pretzel? Is it an, an Auntie Anne's pretzel? Is, is it a rolled it gold? A rolled gold. This is an extremely uncomfortable bathing suit. Uh, what kind? Tell what me. What are your favorite pretzels? All right. Da -da 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 You gotta like. Da -da 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 where am I? Where, okay, you gotta. Okay. I, it, it's up to you. You're the pretzel I'll butter maker. You there. Okay. And then. I will do some artisanal salting. This is okay. kosher salt, um, which is, of course, Mediterranean sea salt. Mm. Ciders of uh, Hanover. I hope I'm as hasty as the cider Snyder's of Hanover. Okay, here. The I don't think out. the salt is coming onto me. Sort of. Let me. You got it. You got to. Yeah, you got to put the salt through the big hole. So it's not that much salt in this. No, what's going on you here? Have to, you have to pat it in. I know. I was doing that. And then. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of the in. big ass pretzels. Uh, Sorry, I got to share everyone's answers. Also, they're Dave McDougal. Chocolate covered. All right, friends, we are almost done. I am now buttered. Okay. I am now salted. But now you're just buttered, what? salted bread. Next? There's I'm one just final buttered, aspect. Salted bread. So I'll. Whoop, whoop. And then. Oh. I'm trying to mimic the pretzel shape, as you can see. With this. well, I got turned into a pretzel. And that was well, I've been turned into a pretzel. Now, Forrest is going to show you something real fun while I get out of this super uncomfortable <laughs> '80s bathing Absolutely. suit. Absolutely, I'm going to show you some of. Oh, thank you, Tiger Bates, for saying that this is amazing television. Salt Bay ain't got shit on Forest. We did it. This is amazing television. I appreciate that. And I think all credit needs to go to Joe Firestone, the innovative creative behind. Well, I got turned into a pretzel. But now let's see some of her stand up comedy. Uh, as as someone who, as I mentioned earlier, is, is 30 wonderful. I uh, I really related to this bit about trying wow, to stay thank young. Thank you. That's that's very you. Wow, you didn't need to stand up. That's nice. Okay. Um, well, I was walking down the street the other day. Uh, has anyone here turned thirty three? Okay. So if uh, if you're a thirty three year old white woman, this joke is gonna crush. Okay. Or me. So I was I was walking down the street. I was doing some window shopping. And I was like looking at this window. I was like, that's cute. That's cute. That's cute. I look up Ann Taylor. Oh no! I got Ann Taylored, and uh, you know, <laughs> it gives me a chill every time I even hear the words Ann Taylor. I just hear my mom go, "They got a petite section." <laughs> I, I don't even know if it's a store. I just know it's a portal <laughs> to menopause, you know. <laughs> but I'm I'm trying I'm trying to stay young, you know. I'm trying to stay young. I'm going to portal parties. Portal to menopause is my favorite mm -hmm. HP Lovecraft. I'm going book. to parties. Like I went to a party the other night, and I I just kind of was talking to the same three people the whole night. I thought this is great. We don't need anybody else. And uh, and then this woman comes up to us, and she goes, "How would you rate this party?" And you know, I I think well, I don't I don't need to wait for the others to answer. I can say nine, and then everyone else in the circle said six. <laughs> and that's just a lesson for you as an adult. If you're in a, if you're at a party and you're having a nine, everyone else is having a six. <laughs> I related to that so much, uh, partially because in these uncertain times, that's been my reaction to the Zoom hangs. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, these are fine. Yeah, these are great. These are great. You I get to be I in my house and talk to you. And have you not in my house when I'm done? This is perfect. <laughs> or else is like, oh no, this is like a five at best. Like it's a nice approximation. And I'm just like, nah, this is great. I Live really related to the Ann Taylor part. I also liked that part. I have definitely no, I've walked by fucking sores and yeah. been like, God damn, that's a cute goddamn blazer. 
Let's see, I think I dodged that because my dad largely wore leather jackets with fringe <laughs> on it. And so I have to go I'll have to hit the 1890s before I'll be like, oh no, I'm wanted to wear those same clothes. The 1890s? The Wild West. Oh. Well, hey there, that's your history lesson for today. Don't say you never learned anything on the We Are Trash People stream. Uh, and don't say you ever saw you never saw the best television uh, from the mind of Joe Firestone. Well, I've been turned into a pretzel. <laughs> Bam. Uh, so, so what happened while I was gone? We watched that clip. Oh, hey! And I talked about how I related to it as someone who's 30 wonderful and then explained I related more to the, the party part. Uh, so. Well, next we wanted to show off just a, just a fun little clip, just a fun little moment uh, from the end of the Chris oh, Deckard yes. show, the parade of unused characters. And I think that I'm really proud of the. When I watched this the first time, I was like, wow, it's so funny that they came up with all those characters for this sketch. And then I like kept watching more things and learning about comedy and learning about television. And I'm like, oh, these were all serious things. Yeah, absolutely. These were definitely all pitched. Do you want to see these characters? See the whole thing right now or just Joe's part? Just Joe's okay. part. Just Joe's part. I think if we have more time, I would suggest we can uh we can turn you into a pretzel. Well, I would suggest watching it um on your own sort of after this, because in a post CGP world. It's, it's really interesting seeing mm -hmm. how many of the people from this I didn't know when the Chris Gethard show ended, but now recognize. Yeah, like Carmen Christopher and Blood Toilet. Well, I knew him because I'd seen his other thing. I love Carmen Christopher presents Blood Toilet. But now here is Joe Firestone's wonderful character. Backpack who carries a human! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous of their costumes That's budget. Me. Right? I mean, the idea that uh, I love, I love. Oh, Dave McDougal has not seen Blood Toilet. Has not seen Blood Toilet. Let's let, let's let's scrub around. Should we show yeah, Blood let's Toilet? Scrub around oh, for Blood okay. Toilet. Here's let's... Blood Toilet. I got Blood Toilet. Okay, you got Blood Toilet. Ah, here's Blood yeah, Toilet. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Just for you, Dave McDougal. <laughs> Please welcome. A now you have blood seen this Blood Toilet. toilet. <laughs> You're welcome, Dave. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad that we were able to bring that to you. That and Welp, I've been turned into a pretzel. Uh, but friends, we are sharing with you the last clip that we have for today. Yes. Uh, we may go back, depending on how soon, we're still kind of calibrating with this show. Like, how much are we going to be talking? How much are we talking with people? How much of clips are we going to want to show? Uh, so we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. What you like, what you dislike. Should we, should we like watch whole clips? Yeah. Well, that would I be... think we should watch whole clips. I think that we should get like a 40 minute long playlist and just intro and outro and play if, all those clips. If, if, you'd if people would rather see that, we're happy to do that. So let us know. Or you here. can see uh, more iterative, iterative yeah. things like bringing you things from the mind of these people. I did like where that. It's a, where it's where it's applicable. Yeah. Where we can bring you. From the mind of Joe Firestone, well, if I've been turned into a pretzel, we will do our best. Not everyone's to do so. fun games like that. No. But this next thing is from The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon, where Joe was a writer for, mm -hmm. for a while. And uh, check it out. Ch -ch 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 check it out. That's the cool, cool, cool weather that's coming up. That's, of course, yes, the yes, cool, cool, the cool, cool weather. weather. Yes, what do and you do? And that's exactly why we have the uh, barbarian octopus beanie. <gasps> <gasps> okay. Yeah. I don't quite understand why uh, anyone would. Uh... Well, you no, know, this is the kind. Of, sorry, this is she's my sister. Um, <laughs> this is based on your sister. Yeah, uh, this is based on my sister's head. Uh, this, but that's not the important part. The important no. part. Look at this. Look at this. What? Look at this. Isn't this fun? And that's not bad. No. <laughs> oh. Look at that. This is great. We look like a couple of criminals. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. We look fun. We look I, this good. is really, I, I, yeah, this is fun. Now, I, no, this one, I kind of, I totally understand this it's one. It's cute. It keeps the front of your face warm, which never is warm. <laughs> yeah, this is very good. Now, no. do you want to buy any of these yet? How do you feel? You feel like you love I'm them? on the fence. 
<laughs> I'm on the fence. Okay. I'm on the fence. I'm not, yeah. I, I don't know which one I want to totally buy. I totally get that because, you know, that's why we, I saved the best for last. Okay. This is a, this is the best one. Can I, now, this. I mean, I think, I think this was the best one. Yes. I think this was the best one. It's the Cthulhu it's hat. It's the actual. It's the octopus. Actual... Was it octopus barbarian? Yep. I don't. I wonder if it's because of this part that it's considered barbarian. You know. I think it's the beard. I think it's this beard also, hmm. because it's the tendrils as the beard, so it looks kind of like a barbarian. I mean, this helps because it makes it look like a Viking helmet on top mm -hmm. of the beard. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, also, the knitness, the like hand knitness, makes it look very uh, barbarian. You consider hand knit things to no. be akin to barbarian. I could see them thinking it looks a little bit medieval, though, like homemade, ah, yes. like homespun, actual, not mass produced. Even though it absolutely is. Yeah, I didn't realize it was. I think I got this on Etsy, but it actually is. <laughs> yes, wear that with a lab coat and your Dr. Zoidberg. Very true. That's true. I initially got it to play, to do a like, costume for everyone's favorite uh lobster gangster from solo a star wars story mr oh uh, that didn't work so the timing of that reveal got it's a little just, messed up so messed up it's everyone's favorite lobster gangster from solo a star wars story therm scissor punch yeah but as you but can it looks see... so much more zoidberg yeah, we also, we got that before we knew what Therm was going to look like. Yeah, not in that, not fully done. Yeah, we, we just knew that Therm was some kind of lobster man, and we're like, lobster, octopus, they're apparently the same thing. We only we'd seen disambiguous the comedians. We, that's the only specificity we care about, <laughs> is in comedy. Oh, yeah, no. Not in, like, With background features. Star Wars characters, I don't care. No, no, no. Uh, but friends, we have just about uh, a little over 10 minutes before the pre-show happens over on the Discord. And I would like to propose that for, for some of these minutes that we have left, what would you like? Well, I'm going to post the link in the chat. Yeah. So if you want to call in and talk about things you've liked from yeah. Joe Firestone, feel have free. We'd love her? to talk with you. If you'd seen her live, we that would be especially thing. cool. Were you just introduced to elements yeah. of of things that she has done by us what did you like from what we've shown you um anything yeah. like that but also what were you going to suggest i was going to suggest that we watch more of uh the joe's ted talk oh sure yeah i thought that would be a nice inspiring thing uh to line up before we get to hear her speak more on uh and get know. more into her uh comedic and just life philosophy before we see her talk to Christopher Gethard. About her comedic and life philosophy. Presumably it'll come up. <laughs> <laughs> it always does. Somewhere like mixed within just conversations about New York, which I like to be like, oh my god, like for a minute I'll be like, oh, I'm annoyed like these New York people think we care so much about New York. And then I'm like, but anyways San Francisco Everyone cares about what's happening in my city. Though. I was going to say, I like it because it makes me get to be like, yeah, San Francisco really is the closest West Coast city to New York. Yup. But anyway, here's some of it's her. It's a little dirtier. Well, it's okay. well, now it's dirtier. Less covid -y. Okay. It's not less. It's not dirtier Everyone than it was. New York used to be dirtier. Maybe a little madder than they should be or sadder than they should be or more irritated or cheaper or dumber or more annoying or lazier, or less tolerant than they should be. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, <laughs> right? We are, are terrible you? Sound off monkeys, in the chat. F's in the chat if you're one of those things. And are you a terrible little monkey? Going down in a little monkey ship. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be one of Joe's kind monkeys. Of depressing, but I tried to make it sound cute. That'd be great if that's what she called her Joe's fan base. Joe's little monkeys. Joe's yeah. little oh, monkeys. <laughs> Joe's like, terrible like, little monkeys. We do nasty, awful things to each other. We're only thinking about I just got the image of you, you calling know, and, in and being and like, hey, Joe, you important. named your fan base. That's any given situation. Hey, Joe, I'm one of your but terrible little monkeys. <laughs> still try to be good. You know? Like, you're in the middle section for a reason. Oh, no. You know? And it, like, yes, you're bad, you know? and But sometimes you're good. Yeah. Like, maybe you, you hit a car and you didn't leave a note. But you still bring banana bread to the book club, and we appreciate that. 
that's my favorite of the jokes. You were proud like to be joke. in the middle section. You know, it's a privilege to be here. You know, sure, you'll never be Michelle Obama. No. no. But you're never going to be Ryan Lochte either. Who is Ryan Lochte? Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's pause this. to We can explain who Ryan Lochte is. Because Ryan Lochte was a very of-the-moment reference that uh, people have forgotten about. He basically said he got, like, he said he got mugged. But he didn't? No. And then that happened yeah, a bunch Lochte more Gate. times. There's a whole Wikipedia article just called Lochte Gate. In 2016, but when did it was 2017 when that actor on no that was 2019 2019 yeah, yeah the swimmer Tiger Bates you're talking about the guy in Chicago yeah oh, that was last year yes um so basically in 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 Rio de Janeiro Brazil Lochte and three other <gasps> swimmers said they were robbed at gunpoint after a night out but it originally it emerged that the armed robbers posing as police were actually security guards. At a gas station where the swimmers had urinated outside the bathroom and Lochte had vandalized a framed poster. I remember and that. And so they ended up having to apologize. And they paid, they ended up paying money to the guards. Yeah, because they fucked up their shit. Yeah. No, they should have. And then he was charged. Well, with, they should have something. I don't know. Well, I don't know if that was. Here that, but they but should not have was, done that. And therefore. He was charged with falsely reporting a crime yeah. as well. Um, that's fucked. And then initially got later that's got so racist it later got too. dismissed because it wasn't actually a it wasn't a real thing. It was wasn't really just, a false crime report. What do you mean it wasn't really a or false crime report? That's what it says. Wikipedia says it's that that's what the court in Brazil said. It didn't rise to the level of filing a false crime report. Because they were like, let's just get these white assholes out of our country. He also <laughs> oh, also, as Kyle points out, he had a reality show that was basically a montage of him showing how stupid he is. Oh. And so that's why. That's why Joe <laughs> was talking him about as him as the terrible he... person. Yeah, this was this was 2016. Yeah, this was December 2016. So it was December. Like soon after that. And it was soon after everything. Everything changed. In a way that we couldn't have expected a month before. In these trying times. Okay. <laughs> so you're doing okay, right? It's okay to be terrible. Yeah. So like when you see your monkey friend do something terrible... Just don't do that thing. When you see your monkey friend do something good, do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> monkey see, monkey do better. <laughs> <laughs> Go monkeys. Yeah, just Yay! terrible little monkeys. <laughs> Woo. We have just moments, just moments before we all need to head over to Discord to hang out for the official Planet Scum pre-show with Miel and Purple, Purple Hat, Hat himself. Uh, oh, I was about to say, like, wow, who in the chat made that really cute comment? It was us. It was you. It was me. It was you. That was this one right here, this monkey. Um, if any of you would like to call in, if any of you would like to tell us about what you love about Joe Firestone, a time that you saw her, um, what you thought of uh, well, I've been turned into a pretzel. Yeah, if you'd like to see more games. If you would like to buy um, us our rendition of Well, I've been turned into a pretzel. If you are interested in, oh, if you want to turn it into a this, if you're maybe like a scout from NBC. Yes, if you're if you're trying to look for content for Peacock. Yeah. Look, look Well, I've been turned into a pretzel. You will have to ask Joe Firestone. Yeah, Joe it would have to sign off on it. Her is the property idea. of Joe Firestone. She would also. I'm not sure how casting is dealt with. Um, but look, if you were to buy it, and even if you weren't to hire us to to be the performers of Well, I've been turned I would at into least a pretzel, watch it. I would watch it, and I would still feel good that Joe Firestone uh, has this incredible, this incredible thing yeah. shared. And also, if you want to support Joe, you can get Punderdome, the game that yeah. she invented with her father. Which is absolutely adorable. It's, a, it's an adorable game. And it's just, it's very fun as well. Yeah, it's very cute. Uh, friends, you have but five minutes. Yeah. But five minutes. Just those five. Before the pre-show, before you have to head over to the Discord, you must. If you don't, you, we will know. We know who's here. Oh yeah, no, we know who's here. Yes, um, and and yes, Kyle, that will be required. Yeah, proof of pretzelness. Pretzels would have such an unfair advantage. Yeah, in that game, I mean, I guess you'd have to double pretzel them. 
Ooh, a double pretzel. Or what if you turn a pretzel into a person? Oh, yeah, yeah, you give it life. You it's breathe like a gingerbread life. man. It's a pretzel bread man. Yeah, it's pretzel bread man. Pretzel bread man. That's a tongue. Bread. That's a tongue twister right there. Pretzel Anyone bread man. Anyone else not able to eat gluten anymore? F's in the chat if you can't eat F's gluten. F's in the chat if you can't eat gluten. I feel like we're just kind of we're we're just running out. We're running out. Uh, the the four minutes before you need to get yeah. over to um. Planet's come out live. So you go to the Discord for the pre-show with Jake and Molly. Planet's come yes. online. Um, I would like to say what I love. Some things that I loved sure. about Joe yeah. Firestone. Um, I love how well she channels just like sweet. Yeah. She has this really like cool thing. It sounds like okay. She and Aparna have this thing where they sound like little old ladies but in the most adorable way possible. And I just want to watch them do things. Yeah. Like I want them to, to be my grandmothers that are my age. <laughs> Cause like, they are. I saw Parna at uh, outside. Oh Lens yeah, you did a couple years ago yeah. and it was excellent. Yeah. I haven't gotten to see either of them live uh, yet, but I would love to at some point. Cause Joe Firestone is one of my favorite stand up yeah. comedians. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we didn't oh. talk about it too much. But yeah, her character, as Tiger Bates points out, her character yes. on Joe Para Talks With You feels so authentic and so absurd at the same time. That's something I see in Megan Stalter's as well. When when Megan yeah. Stalter, it's like this switch that they can both turn from being like incredible, incredible, like heart wrenching, human, naturalistic performances. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And especially in scenes where they're like, I, I see it most when they're talking to people that they're like in a relationship with. And I'm like, oh, my heart. But it's so real. And then they turn and do something like super random. I love Sarah Connor. Her character is so yes. good. Um, And and feels so real. Yeah. And that's one of the things I like is about her stand up is that she uh, she was like the face. Feels she's the face real. of weird stand up for a while. Like yeah. she was one of those the big names. Like she got written up in Vulture. Yeah. Um. And there's an authenticity to that, to her weird yeah. comedy that I think grounds it in a really interesting and in a way that makes it a lot stronger than it would be if it was, if that grounding wasn't there. And she has a kind of Ann Taylor normalcy yeah. Yeah. that grounds you the way that they talk about like in comedy, if you're doing something absurd, you're only supposed to absurdify like one element or two elements I don't know this. I watched this video on how to do this kind of comedy like a week ago. Uh, <laughs> so behold, words from my ass. Um, you're only supposed to like absurdify one of the details. Otherwise, there's like too many absurd things yeah. and people don't know what to hold on to. So like Douglas Adams, uh, it's British banality uh, in, in terms of the characters uh, and how they interact, but absurd uh, Location. We have one minute left. We have so one I think minute. we should go to give people time to make it to the Discord. Joe Firestone does Live. this thing. She does that. Conclusion. She does. No, she absolutely does that. Tune and back I in next week great. for more. Welp, I've been turned into a pretzel. And Who us? will be turned into a pretzel next time from the mind of Joe Firestone? You'll find out next week. But right now, get to the Discord because it's the pre-show with Jake and Molly. Head over there and